So, um, in the last episode, we gave a kind of informal description of replication or reproduction in a reflective setting, and now we're going to uh, walk that through in a, um, a more formal presentation. Uh, and again, the point here is to motivate um, the the actual uh, formal syntactic presentation of the calculus that or calculi that underlie these notions. Um, and again, uh, I, I, it's a little bit more, it makes the presentation more complicated, but I am presenting two of these calculi at the same time. So there's both the ordinary pi calculus and then a reflective or introspective version of that calculus. And part of the reason to do that is uh, so that um, you can see that there's there's something underlying both of them. There's a form uh, sitting underneath both of them, and that's um, the, the, the sort of you know this is not just a one-off accident. Um, um, that 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 there's a deeper there's a there's a deeper uh, um, approach to dynamics here um, uh, that and. Uh, that allows actually the specification of many different uh, notions of dynamics. So there's a whole sort of design space of um, uh, notions of dynamics um, here. Um, so I, I don't want to get too far uh, uh, astray, but um, rather let's focus in on this, this one example. So the idea is that we have a, a kind of duplicator, um, which we've written here d of x, um, and uh, so, so the notion is parameterized in some channel. And on that channel, we listen for what? For the code or recipe for doing something. Uh, and then, that's what this dot is, um, we, we instantiate or, or execute that recipe. We run the recipe. Uh, that's what this star y is, um, or y is the recipe. And at the same time, in parallel, we are also taking the recipe and sending it back out on the channel X for some other agent to pick up. So we get a copy uh, by listen, you know, listen, you know, listening on our, our um, uh, listening for a call. In this case, you might think of it as um, radio frequency. So we're listening to a broadcast at X. Uh, we pick up the, the, the recipe, um, write it down, and then start uh, following it, and at the same time rebroadcast that recipe back out. Now, copy um, some given recipe, say p, uh, on a channel x is um, defined by you take the duplicator and you run that in parallel with broadcasting on the channel x where you've instantiated the, du the duplicator the code for the process you want to copy in parallel with the duplicator. So we've adjoined to our recipe the recipe for duplication. And all of that is broadcast uh, on the channel X and that is run in parallel with the duplicator. So uh, those who are more familiar with these formal calculi will, will know the syntactic similarity be between this and um, the uh, paradoxical y component. So let's unfold these definitions. So if we take copy and then we unfold uh, copy and d of x. And notice that these are these the there is no recursion in these definitions. These are only um, these definitions d of x and copy of x are only for the convenience of our eyes to be able to spot things, spot patterns. They are strictly not needed. Uh, there is no um, and there's no left-right recursion uh, mentioned in these definitions. So anyway, we take uh, the d of x, uh, which is mentioned here, and we expand out what it is, which is this, this um, input prefixed process, and we run that in parallel with a process that's outputting. Well, this is listening on the channel x, and that's sending on the channel x. So uh, we take this, and we um, substitute it in for y. Um, so in this case, we're going to take that code and just start running it. And in this case, we're going to rebroadcast that code. So what do we get? Well, there's the y uh, that's been sort of dereferenced, as it were. So 
the bit that was communicated along X is now plunked down in place for Y, running in parallel with on, on the channel X, we, we rebroadcast. We'll notice that this bit here, this bit right here, is just exactly copy all over again. So since copy expands out to this and that runs to this, we'll get another copy of P. So we, we got a copy of P together with copy P at X. So we get P in parallel with P together with copy P at X, and so on and so forth. And so at, you know, in the limit, what we see is a population of P's. So uh, in the case of uh, our cake baking recipe, what we'll see is a population of cakes. We'll, we'll, we'll generate um, uh, uh, <laughs> an infinite supply of cakes uh, to let them eat, so to speak. Uh, so that's, uh, that sort of walks us through this, um, uh, this little example, but it also should provide a hunger for uh, some, some questions to be answered. So what is this arrow? You know, what is the substitution? You know, how, how, are we, how are we affecting these calculations? And it turns out that there are rules that are governing these calculations, both for this calculus and also for the pi calculus. So we need to go over uh, those rules, uh, what those rules are um, that govern those calculi, which we will do in the next section.